since the past few days for the People's Democratic Party as the party's reconciliation efforts go on to mend fences ahead of the 2023 presidential poll. Okay. Governor Hopu Zodema hands over security vehicles and guidance to the Inspector General of Police today in a bid to fight insecurity in the state. But amidst all of these are the politics and the internal affairs of the APC. We engage you, Governor, tonight. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the program. This is Politics Today, live on China's television. I'm sure Akim Aloe in Abuja. Let's continue with our countdown on the, the ASU strike. We understand that there should be a meeting between the lecturers and the federal government today in a bid to end in the strike action, which is uh, taking almost 185 days now since the university lecturers in federal universities in the country began to strike action, keeping students away from the classroom. The standoff between the federal government and the university lecturers continue, and these students are idle. President Buhari gave a two-week ultimatum one month ago to the Minister of Education to ensure that the standoff is resolved. And she is looking forward to the stakeholders getting their act together to resolve what has become a national embarrassment. Tonight, several issues are on the table. Security, politics of the APC, politics of the PDP, so much to talk about. Before we get into all of that, let me allow you to listen uh, to some of your political roundup stories. Governor Samuel Otom of Bedouin State has advocated a bipartisan political engagement among the political parties going into the 2023 general elections to come out with the best candidate in the presidential election to rescue and save the country from collapse. Governor Otom says all indicators from both security and economic fronts are sadly against the survival of the nation and her people. Governor Otom disclosed this in Makodi while addressing journalists before the State Executive Council meeting on the interest generated by his meeting along with Governor Yesum Wike who hosted the Labour Party presidential candidate Mr. Peter Obi, noting that as politicians, it is unhealthy to shut doors at opposition party members, as Nigeria currently needs saving and all hands must be on deck to do so. I say that the challenges of our country today is beyond partisan politics. Over 300 women from Gombe South Senatorial Zone, a core and part of Gombe local government area, have defected from the All Progressives Congress to the People's Democratic Party. According to them, the action was due to the failed promises from the state government, as well as harsh economic challenges facing the people. The defectors were received by the governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Mohamed Bardi. River State Governor Yusuf Wiki has challenged politicians who helped to win elections in 2023 to relocate from the nation's capital, Abuja, to their various states to showcase their achievements in their areas. Governor Wiki believes that a victory of any candidate or political party in next year's polls should be influenced by the kind of governance such individual or party provides to the people. The People's Democratic Party Ocean State's chapters says the party will not participate in the October 15 local government election in the state. For Chairman Caretaker Committee, Dr. Akindele Adekunle made this known while briefing journalists on the position of the party in a forthcoming local government election. Election. He described the local government election fixed for October 15 as illegal. Earlier on Monday, the Ocean State Independent Electoral Commission announced that local government elections in the state will be held on the 15th of October. As we speak to you, outside this press conference that we granted on Monday, there is no notification to be included. The, the crisis rocking the Plateau State chapter of the Labour Party over its substantive governorship candidate and party chairman may have been laid to rest following the resolution by the stakeholders. This is according to the deputy chairman of the Labour Party in the state, Comrade Mike Audu, in an interview with journalists during a strategic engagement for all support groups for OB Dati in Jos. The vice chairman says Patrick Dakum remains the authentic governorship candidate of the Labour Party in the state following the resignation of Honorable Johanna Marjif. With this 
pot that Peter Obidati are having in Nigeria. It is not only workers, but everybody that is affected by the problems of this country is supporting that movement for now. And the national chairman of the Accord Party, Mr. Mohamed Naladu, is asking Nigerians to vote for youthful candidates in the 2023 general elections in order to fast track the development of the nation. He was speaking in Abuja at the National Executive Committee meeting of the party. Mr. Naladu says youths need to rise up to redirect the affairs of Nigeria by providing quality leadership. Nigerians have to wake up and make sure they vote in a youthful person that can transform Nigeria. Well, then, the Inspector General of Police was in Imo State today, and he says any nation that is desirous of securing lives and property of its citizens must first enhance the capacity of its security agencies. The police boss commissioned a 10 armored personnel carrier security vehicle, as well as other security gadgets donated to the Nigerian police force by the Imo State government. He commends the governor, Senator Hope Uzodema, for his contributions to the security agencies in Imo State, especially in the fight against banditry and all forms of criminality. Meanwhile, Governor Hope Uzodema says his administration may continue to do its best to ensure adequate security for Imo people as well as investors. He appeals to youth in the state to shun violence and support government in the fight against criminality. Take a listen to both uh, men. Since the inception of my administration, I have always worked with the federal government and security agencies to ensure that the Imo State is safe for our people. For people who are also resident in Imo State and for people who are visiting. Therefore, what we are doing today is not a coincidence, but a deliberate and sustainable effort aimed at enhancing the capacity of the police to execute their constitutional law enforcement mandate. Imo State presents a unique security challenge as one of the major commercial heartbeats of Southeast. As such, the state requires a leader with political will to draw on scar budgetary resources to equip and energize its security architecture. Well, these are some of the sound bites of what really happened today in Imo State. Imo State has uh, seen huge security breaches and threats over the past months leading to deaths. But what is being done to permanently stop these killings? I'm now being joined on the program live by the governor of Imo State, Senator Hope Uzadema, who joins us virtually from Oweri, the Imo State capital. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for joining us tonight. First and foremost, I guess it would be good for us to get a background on the reasons or what inspired the purchases of those gadgets and those armored personal vehicles that you donated to the police today. Thank you, Sheo. And um, uh, let me start by saying that the only reason why there is a government the primary purpose of government is the security of life and property. And of late, we are witnesses to the increasing wave of banditry, kidnapping, and all sorts of criminality in Imo State that led to the destruction of so many police stations and the killing of so many policemen. And as a government, we must support our security agencies to be able to do their job, their mandate, their constitutional mandate of ensuring law and order in the society. And in this respect, we decided to support the Nigerian police and other security agencies who have been fighting this battle by making sure some of the equipments that are not easily at their disposal 
are procured, the enable them become more efficient and proactive. So that is the reasoning behind our decision to procure armored personal carriers, knowing fully well that the bandits are also operating with high caliber weapons that have caused or led to the death of so many policemen and women, including the Nigerian army. Quickly ask, is there any reason perhaps AIG or yourself as a government in Imo State discovered behind the direct assault on security agents or agencies or the Nigerian police force in Imo State? Any reason behind that? Why are they doing that? Well, it is not uh, limited to Imo State alone. Of course, you can see the wave of banditry across the country today. As banditry in the northern part of the country, banditry in the southern part of the country, banditry also in the eastern part of the country. But there are peculiarities state by state. Some of these crimes are being uh, supported. Recall that two years ago, when this thing started in Nemo State, when the bandits attacked police stations, as they're leaving from the scene of crime, people will be clapping for them. People will be laughing with them. So we, the people took this thing as if it was a kind of entertainment. But incrementally, lives were lost. Incrementally, assets were destroyed. Incremental, incrementally, police stations were destroyed and burnt down. Individual homes. Some targeted politicians were also, their houses were burnt. So we have to, we took personal interest to begin to investigate the reason behind this. I told you times with that number in Imo State. Some of the cases of banditry here are politically contrived. Some are the real attacks by bandits. So I think that the kind of politics with bitterness that is going on in the state and some part of this uh, uh, region should really be condemned. And that is why we have decided to embark on both kinetic and non-kinetic approach. We've engaged the community leaders, we've engaged the vigilante approach, we've engaged people into dialogue getting traditional rulers to embark on reconciliation, address the political grievances of some politicians who have not been able to manage the defeat or loss or losses they got from the last election. So that we are on it. I think uh, we are very getting close to a final solution to the issue of banditry and uh, kidnapping and all these sorts of crimes in Imo State. So, I mean, you mentioned, I mean, a few times we've spoken about this in an interview with us here. You said that uh, some of these things are politically backed. And uh, for tonight, we would like you to uh, clarify to us. You've mentioned bandits, sometimes unknown gunmen, uh, terrorists. What exactly are the major issues here in Emo State? I, I see the case of bandits uh, linked to the northwestern region of the country, or terrorists, the Boko Haram, that we see in some parts of the country, or the unknown government that are peculiar to the southeastern region, or in Imo State, it's just pure politics and brigandage that is involved here. Well, Sean, all these jargons came from people like you. Whether they are called unknown government, whether they are called bandits, whether they are called armed robbers or kidnappers. The fact still remains that the common denominator is that people are being killed, assets are being destroyed, violence is being, is being encouraged. So all we are saying, even the Nigerian military has decided even to reform their curriculum, to now bring experts that will now teach our soldiers, our security agencies of this modern kind of crime that was not here before this time. So everybody, we were all taken on our ways. But the good news is that we have risen to the occasion. So we are now going to address the issues. One thing we've not gotten from 1990 to today 
is how to manage political defeats. Our democracy is highly threatened because of that. People are not doing politics with the spirit of sportsmanship as it is practiced in other climes. People are so bitter when they're not able to have their way. And they can go at, to any length to uh, make sure that individual interests or personal interests are achieved. But I think that uh, gradually so we are coming to terms with the realities of, of, of the time. Now, I mean, you, when you say this in Imo State, the peculiarity is about politics of bitterness. Have you been able to come around to those who are perhaps behind all of these, maybe identify the, the players or the perpetrators or those behind it? Have you been able to do that? When you say that you are coming to a very point to solving it permanently, what exactly do you mean? Well, I, what I mean is that uh, the investigation in some of these cases have gotten to advanced stage. And what you want to get tonight may not be possible because the matter, some of these matters are still being investigated by security agencies. By the time they come up with their final reports, it will be made public to all of us. And that time, too, you may be able to know the identities of some of those behind the bandit train in most. Hmm. Okay. So maybe we can call the ones in the say political banditry, isn't it? Maybe that, that, that jargon might be correct to identify the problem, uh, in a, because sometimes, as I say, politics is local. Maybe some of the situation in Imo State is also peculiarly local. Uh, let me ask you, Governor, uh, the vigilantes and the Ebubago, uh, how much of that has been able to help in securing Imo State or helping, uh, we saw what happened in Ondo State. Uh, those that have criticized the vigilantes and the Ebubago in Imo State, what is going on? Is this underhandedness or how are you identifying some of their excesses such that uh, innocent people are not being unnecessarily harassed or killed in the process? Ebubago is a vigilante group in Imo State. And how do you become a member of Ebubago? the community leaders through their town union and traditional rulers submit names of young men and women willing to help uh, with the services of uh, vigilante arrangement that Imo State government uh, created. It is a product of a legislation. There is a law back in Ebubago by Imo State House of Assembly. And the, the approach is to get communities to be involved, collect intelligence, and then hand this intelligence to security agencies. And the embargo has no sophistication, like the kind of rifle, the kind of gun that the bandits are carrying all along. The embargo doesn't, they're not armed. The embargo is a vigilante arrangement who, when they see unusual movements, they pick it up and they report to security agencies to work with it. So it's not as if it's a, a kind of uh, a security force that goes to war or that can kill or, or, or that or that. So I am saying that those who are not interested in having a peaceful atmosphere, a peaceful environment in Imo State are those that are criticizing Ebubago. Some of these bandits are now operating as Ebubago. Of late, we discovered that bandits will attack a particular place. And the next thing, because they have their syndicate, the next thing you will see, they come up with a propaganda. A bubago have attacked. But between me and those who are in charge of a bubago and the security agencies, they know that the bubago doesn't have the capacity to attack men with sophisticated arms. So it is that is why. The, the political undertone of the criminality in Imo State is gradually being unraveled. And at the end of the day, we'll, get, we'll, we'll, we'll come to town with the restore. So it is not about so the environment. Perhaps, uh, let me, Yeah. So let me, let's that, perhaps uh, wrap up on I'll the issue of uh, the internal security in Imo State. All right. 
So, and I'd like to ask, how many of those members of the Bubuagu, the vigilantes, do you have in Imo State? Like your colleague governor in Benue State, who is seeking, requested to the president, that the local vigilantes that are set up in that state should be armed. Would you also be considering that a Bubuagu and the vigilantes in Imo State should carry arms? And I was, I know I'm a parliamentarian, and right from the days of my days in the Senate, we have always gone against arming individuals that are not trained to be armed. So if I go in Imo State, I'm not talking about Benue because I don't know the situation in Benue. If I go in Imo State, I'm not going to arm them. Rather, if I go to do collaborative contribution and work with security agencies who are sufficiently armed by government. You know the provision of security, like the police, like the army, like the Navy, like the Air Force, is under the exclusive list. So as a federating unit, I don't know where I will get the mandate or the statute that will enable me to procure sophisticated arms to give to local people like Ebubagu members who have not been trained. So you don't ask for to an injury. All right, uh, let's move into politics quickly. Uh, but before we do that, um, that uh, the usual weekly um, see at home, how is that working out in your state? Is it dousing out or is it still there? Well, if you uh, come to Imo, we, there is nothing called sit at home anymore. The people are going about their businesses. People are going about whatever they want to do. Of the workers go to work, traders go to do their businesses. Uh, we have been able to encourage and support our security officers to occupy the space and ensure that the people are protected. There may be pockets of cases here and there in Imo State at the Askers, but with time, I'm sure those things will be over. Is there anything like a wave of obedient movement in your state? Because um, what we are hearing is that political movement uh, that is going to affect the southeastern region of the country and the five states. Uh, those who belong to the uh, obedient movement, the Peter Ruby supporters, are saying, look, they will take the five states of the southeast 100%. Those are some of the political um, uh, permutations of those who are supporting uh, Peter Obi. Is that fever catching Imo State? You are the leader of uh, APC in that state. I think uh, I'm a politician, and you know my party is APC. And uh, I have my candidates in my party. And I know that we are currently consulting and speaking uh, to our people to vote for our candidates. So, and I'm concerned with what will come out of my campaign for my party. I don't want to join issues with people be who you know is not a member of my party. But I know members of APC are obedient to APC. Oh, so there are obedience also in APC? I don't know what you mean. The meaning of obedience as it means English. Loyalty to party is super. It, it has, that's the latest uh, political uh, slogan in Nigeria that have been brought into our political dictionary in Nigeria. But let me ask you, what would you be telling I think, your I think members? That, that, is that, is show, that is Shemu's dictionary. That is not my dictionary. In my own dictionary, no, what it, is there is APC. It, 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 it just <laughs> crept into... <laughs> It just crept into our political dictionary recently, obedient, uh, mm -hmm. perhaps uh, coined out of Peter Obi's name. So uh, give us an understanding of what you will be telling the people of Imo State. What would you say you have done to convince them to vote for your party in the next dispensation? I'm very confident that the reasonable minds in Imo State will vote for my party. Let me start. By 2020, when I came here as the governor, 95% of our major roads were not passable. Today, the major economic 
roads in Imo State have been managed in a very first class manner, but even the opposition party members are commending my efforts. From 1999 to today, members of Imo State House of Assembly has no place they stay to sit. They are attached to one local secretary here in the world. The Imo State House of Assembly building that was abandoned over 30 something years ago has just been rehabilitated and the parliamentary environment created for our legislators. There is no member of the House of Assembly who will go into that place, come out, and tomorrow there is an election that will not want to vote for APC. For over 30 years, the Imo Standard Shoe, which was a major industry created by Mbako administration, was abandoned and seized by AMCON for bad loans. My government, within two years, I've just recovered Imo Standard Shoe. And any moment from now, Imo Standard Shoe will be creating over 10,000 jobs. Recall that the Malaysians came to Nigeria to take a pan can, pan fruit seedlings to go back to Malaysia. That was the Eastern Palm by the government of M.I. Obara. Other Palm has been ab abandoned for over 30 years. I've just recovered that other Palm, paid off the loans, going to buy a memorandum of understanding with the rules of Dublin. That other Palm is currently producing 100 tons of palm oil on a daily basis. And if our Performance improvement plan is implemented. And the plan will be creating over 35,000 jobs. Why will those people from there not vote for APC? Over 1,800 workers that were retrenched without pension have just paid their pension. That is 1,800 votes for APC. Over the water scheme, all the residents in Oweri lived without water for over 18 years. The water, water scheme is running now. Households in the world cannot drink water. Why would they not vote for APC? If you come and drive from a world to Olu, Mr. President is due to commission these two major roads, two major economic roads that will stim stimulate commerce in Imo State and indeed in the eastern region. A world to Olu is properly constructed and lit up. In fact, they can drive from a world to Olu with your eyes closed and you won't go into the bush. But we're for to keep with the same thing. A few days ago, I flagged off a construction, the construction of a world to my. These are federal rules that have been abandoned for decades. I did these rules with understanding that federal government will refund the money back to the state of. Why will those living in those areas not vote for APC? It is not talking, uh, it's not me, black Let me it perhaps take you further. Uh, let me take you further. And perhaps ask you, you are spearheading the Bola Tinobu, uh, Kashim Shetima presidential campaign in the Southeast. Now, uh, there's been a lot of criticism uh, and a lot of pressure on your party, especially on the issue of the same faith decision that your party made. How do you hope to market this brand, this presidential ticket, to the people of your region? Democracy is government of the people by the people and for the people. And in Nigeria, we are practicing partisan democracy, where every party is entitled to field candidates for every contest. APC has selected their candidates. And the next stage of for the democratic requirements is to now market the candidates to the people. I'm not going to market the candidates only to share with because we are broadcast. This is a business between me, my party, and the voters. So we are taking our candidate, which is our product. I coordinate him now in the Southeast. So I'm taking him to the people of Southeast. And it's my business to explain to them why he should be voted for. And I have things like So that's just, why we are asking, what exactly will you be telling your people? How do you market him? Considering some of told, what has become from the, perhaps from a most, tough truth, from him, from him politically speaking. From point of view, just a few minutes ago, I just told you about some achievements we have recorded in Nemo State. In the same manner, before 2015, all we hear is that there will be a second Niger bridge that will connect commerce between Lagos and the East. 
Nobody paid any attention. Government after government made those promises and it never happened. Right from the days of Sadare in the Second Republic, the APC government under President Mohamed Buhari came. Second Niger Bridge is 95% complete and about to be commissioned by the Mr. President any moment from now. With a budget of 368 billion naira, 98% fully paid for by giant construction giant Julius Ledger. But that cut to uh, Enugu Road up to 2015 was not possible. Go there and now you see that all those traders from Aba, from Newi, from Okigwe that were crying during that period, they are now very happy because the road has been done. The same thing from Onicha to Enugu. The same thing from Onicha to Oweri. So we have things to show. It is not about propaganda. It is not about uh, social media. It is not a social club. We are talking of democracy. And leadership is a serious business. The President Mohamed Gubara administration, with his achievements, that has refused to go into propaganda like all the opposition parties. Because of the patriotic determination of Mr. President, he has been able to decentralize development in Nigeria. That today, if you talk about Southeast, you have things to show for it. If you talk about Southwest, you have things to show for it. Anybody who does not like APC government in Southwest, and yet every morning you enter train in Lagos and go to the party, and you enter train in Abuja, you go to Kaduna, and you come and see that the Eastern Rail Line is being rehabilitated from Pochako to Meduki. With all the federal road networks under serious construction, some already right. completed. What are we talking about? No, no. So We're let's get to the campaign time. field. But let me, uh, please, uh, we need to close this conversation. And I'd ask, like to ask you this just in about five seconds, if you can answer this. Since you're spearheading uh, the APC campaign in the Southeast, out of the five states, how many of those states can you deliver to your party? Well, um, you see, it is not a predetermined uh, arrangement. I'm confident that APC has done so well to the extent that they can win all the states in Nigeria. But we still need to engage the people. And campaigns will soon start by September, and we'll have to go and market our products. But that will finish the marketing. That will carry out an opinion poll that will tell us or give us an idea of how many states that will win proper. Because we're talking about human beings. And in this business, one day can change a lot of things. Don't forget, it's democracy. Right. Thank you so much. Governor Hope, Thank who's you, Adema, Executive Governor of uh, Imo State. Thank you so much indeed for your time tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. We'll take a break, everyone. And when we return... We take on the internal affairs of the People's Democratic Party and the reconciliation effort. How much of the fence mending uh, agenda is being achieved? To find out, our next guest is, was a presidential aspirant of the PDP, Mr. Samuel Onhabua. Stay with us, everyone. We'll be back. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. Now, let's yes, now move away from the APC and Imo State and focus on the People's Democratic Party, Nigeria's main opposition party. The PDP is going through some rough patches right now as leaders engage themselves in reconciliation talks. Governor of Adama said Ahmad of Intiri, who welcome um, the presidential candidate of the PDP to rousing um, welcome in Yola yesterday has been appointed by the PDP presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar to head the reconciliation with Governor Yinstam Wike of River State. Take a listen to him. I think 2023 is for tech for PDP. Atiku, inshallah, come 2023 will be the president of this country. Uh, our country, our party is united. We are focused and the reconciliation is up and uh, is in progress. And it will surprise you that I'm even the chairman 
of the reconciliation committee between Atiku and, and, and Wike on Atiku's side. And I assure you that once we start, uh, we'll get over it. As leaders, we'll ensure we'll put everything into this reconciliation to ensure that Atiku and uh, Wike's camp are back as one and united party members for the success of PDP. You heard him, Governor of Adama State, Omar Rufintri. So there is the Atiku side and there is the Wike side. He will be leading the reconciliation on the Atiku side. Well, there have been a lot of tension in the party over meetings and some overtures that we've been seeing recently. Potakot has become a maker of some sort, seeing a lot of visitation from her party leaders across the aisle. And we've seen uh, in the rank and file of the PDP also those who have taken to the side of the River State Governor, Yin Sum Wike. Uh, we saw uh, something like that also uh, yesterday evening, while Governor Yin Sum Wike met with the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Mr. Peter Obi. At a meeting which was held on, uh, in the evening of yesterday at Mr. Wike's private residence in Porakot, we had uh, the former governor of Undo State, Olusha Gumimiko, the former governor of Cross River State, Donald Duke, Benue State Governor Samuel Autumn, Abia State Governor Okeze Okpazu, and uh, Gombe uh, State, former governor Ibrahim Dankwembo, and former member of the House of Reps, Honorable. Um, well then, what does this mean for the PDP? Is the party being held back with all of these patches on all of these rough uh, roads that he's uh, traveling at the moment? Uh, well, that's a big question, isn't it? Has he been reached out to? What does that mean? Is that a handshake? You heard what Mr. Wicke said last week. Let's get a sense of what is happening internally in the PDP. I'm being joined by a former presidential aspirant of the PDP, uh, Mazi uh, Sam Ohambua, who joins us from our Lagos studio. Thank you so much, and good evening to you. Let me get your view, first and foremost. Should there be any kind of worry from anybody? For those who have uh, thought that these meetings that you are seeing in Portacot mean something politically, from your own point of view, as an insider, what is your view on it? Thank you, Shev, uh, for inviting me to this meeting uh, this, this evening. Um, to be sincere to you, uh, I, I, for some of us who are not uh, used to, you know, mincing words, uh, we speak as we are led to speak the truth. Uh, every rightful, every right-thinking member of the party is worried about this uh, festering of this discordant um, situation, the, 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 the strife you are seeing and the conflict that we have seen. Uh, for me personally, it's a painful thing to me to see happen uh, because as I said before, PDP by up to now has the best chance to win the election in 2023. Uh, but we are taking too much time to resolve what I called apparently minor internal issues. They're, they're not so complicated. Nobody's contesting who won the primaries. That's where people get into trouble. You know, even if there are issues as to uh, uh, the choice of a vice presidential candidate, these things could, could have been resolved speedily. This is almost three months. We did our primaries at the end of May. We're almost coming to the main, uh, end of August. I believe that we needed to have sorted this out before now. Before whatever anybody thinks, we are demarketing the party by allowing all this festering or every day when the newspaper talking about Wiki, talking about Atiku. I don't think that's what we should be spending time doing now. We should be focused on you know, selling the manifesto of the party and beginning to get ready the candidate to start the campaigns and harmonize and um, harness all the resources that this party has. This party has a lot of resources, human, uh, intellect, uh, political strategies, and uh, people who can sell this party 
and sell the candidate and sell the uh, position of the, of the party. So I personally have a worry that we seem not to have adequate um, or have put enough effort behind the reconciliation. Maybe we're not understanding that we're about to enter into a major political contest. Uh, it's not just a, a, APC, uh, which in itself you cannot just, you know, uh, discount being the party in power. There is a, there, there's, the, there's the factor of incumbency. Uh, despite its poor record, it has the power of incumbency. That's something we should contest with. There's a third, a, 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 a third force rising up every day and gaining ground. And we are, wa we are wasting time, you know, in dealing with issues that are distracting us. I think we need, uh, our leaders need to wear a new hat. They need to put a new, a new strategy into this. Our leaders need to develop better conflict resol resolution um, uh, uh, virtues or recruit more people into the uh, leadership that can help bring these matters to a close. I don't think it's as complicated as, it's, as, it's, as we're making it uh, look. And many supporters of PDP are getting weary just hearing the same story over and over. And I'm, and, and I'm being very sincere about it. I'm just, I'm just okay. hoping that so, we can yeah. do something. So I'd I, I like to, yeah, yeah, Dr. Wambua, I'd I like to, two, two angles quickly uh, is the fact that uh, one, we wonder that this shouldn't be difficult. But why does it look difficult for this so-called rift, rift to be resolved? Why? For me, it is shows that we do not have the adequate conflict resolution capacity, internal conflict resolution capacity. I really don't know why it should be so. We have the board of trustees. We have elders in the party. We have well-meaning people. Even the even, even the, the presidential aspirants are there waiting to be harnessed, to be used to help in dealing with so many of these issues that the party seems to be confronting. Uh, so I, I just, the only the, the way I put it is that we, do, we don't seem to have enough of um, uh, conflict revolution capacity or willingness or determination or the level of seriousness that some of us are putting to this. Maybe some people do not think it deserves that level of seriousness. That, for me, is the issue. Maybe human ego and uh, inappropriate understanding of how to you know, deal with issues. When a man has won a contest, it behoves on him to bring home, if it means visiting, cajoling, begging, because we have a big fight ahead. So we need to get everybody on board. And if I were, as, as, uh, as my friend uh, Dele spoke the other day, I mean, if, if it was me, <laughs> these matters will have been resolved the first, in fact, that weekend after the election. I mean, it will have been resolved or, or, or soon after that. Uh, but everybody has his style, and I believe that uh, our presidential candidate is an experienced politician, very versed, very experienced. And I do hope that those who are advising him understand the enormity of the problems we face and the consequences of this lethargy and dragging a small matter. I mean, he, he, people will say if you can't resolve ordinary internal conflict, and you have a country bedeviled with conflicts, bedeviled with, with all sorts of uh, problems, why, why would it take this long to, to even resolve the security problem if we come to power in, 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 in 2023? I mean, the, 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 the security problem in one month or two, we should see the, the impact of the new government and the new leadership. So I just hope that uh, we will we would um, resolve these matters quickly, take away all the ego, and become serious and and and, and project ourselves as leaders, not only as leaders, as people who want to win an election. Every day there's a headline right. news. Now, let, about me, let me let me hop in again. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Quickly, sure. uh, if you were on the other side, uh, that is the Atiku Abubakar side, and you see all of these overtures. These meetings in Port Harcourt, would it bother you at all? Because in Nigeria, there is no political movement or political uh, meeting that is for nothing. Politicians don't hold meetings for, 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 for meetings' sake. There are purposes for these meetings. 
So if you see these kind of meetings and these closed door arrangements being done and engagements every day here and there in Port Harcourt, would you be bothered? One of the greatest failures of people is to underrate competition. As CEO of a multinational for many years, and um, I, 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 I do not underrate competition, no matter how small they are. And every move the competitor makes in the marketplace causes an alarm for me. And I, I, I deploy forces to make sure we counter those forces quickly. Because you don't have a second chance. Every day, the market sphere is being eroded by all this and uh, creating a higher level of dissonance. The problem of the party may not be as bad as it is looking, but media, they say perception is everything. And we need to pour water on this and put it off. Certainly, all those political visits everybody's coming to, if I'm chairman of the party or presidential candidate, I don't think I will sleep well. Uh, maybe because I do not have the kind of heart or spirit they have, I will sleep well. I will be sure that the next morning I fly to Port Harcourt or fly to wherever I need to fly and pour water on this and close this chapter so that we can move forward. That's my candid advice. I've offered this advice uh, through proxies uh, to, to, to the party leadership that we need to harness our resources. This, this party is bleeding right now. And if, as a healthcare professional, if there's bleeding going on anywhere, the first night I get some constriction and stop the bleeding. It is important because the hemorrhage can cause damage. The party has had enough time to sort out these problems, uh, these this disagreements that are not, uh, that they are not and, and it's, I come to think of it, this is not the only one. The problem is that this is the one that is visible. And if we're taking so much time to finish this, how are we going to deal with the others? The others are quiet, wondering and waiting when their own issues will be dealt with. So I think the party leadership has a call they should be humble and be dynamic and strategic in dealing with the party. Nigerians are ready to, to get PDP on board because as it stands now is the party that is best suited to take out, to change Ni uh, the situation Nigerians are having, to rescue Nigeria, as we're saying, to restore Nigeria to a country that can, you know, aspire to be globally competitive, a, to build a country for which we all can call our own and which works for every Nigerian. That is the opportunity PDP has. All right. so, and I hope we do not uh, let it slip. Yeah, you, you were talking about the fact that this is perhaps not the only problem that the PDP is confronted with. Even the running mate of the PDP uh, to Atiku Abubakar, uh, Governor Okowa, in his own state of Delta, there is a problem because the governorship candidacy or the ticket of that party is being contested in court right now, and there is no clarity as to uh, who becomes the candidate of the of PDP in Delta State. Now, another problem is the leadership of the PDP. Now, we're made to understand uh, sources in the PDP in some meetings uh, that. Uh, when Senator Yocha Ayu was decided a consensus, uh, as a consensus candidate, he was made to sign an undertaking that if any candidate, a presidential candidate emerges from the North, he will resign his position. And there was an interview he granted to Vanguard newspaper. And let me read a portion of that uh, interview, sir. He says, if the PDP, I'm quoting part of uh, the response of uh, Senator Yocha Ayu in that interview, published in the Vanguard newspaper, he said, and I quote, I'm a very democratic person, and I will do everything to promote the interest and image of my party. If the PDP says I should step down after a presidential uh, candidate emerges and happens to be from the North, I will be very glad to do so because what we want is to take over the government and run the government in the interest of so Nigerians. So I will sacrifice anything to ensure that my party wins, end of quote. Those are some of the uh, responses from um, Senator Yocha Ayu to the Vanguard newspaper. Now, we understand now that some of the talks is that Senator Yocha Ayu should step aside. How are you digesting this kind of scenario and what has become a tough chew for the PDP? Again, uh, I, 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 I keep wondering, uh, you know, politicians have been, have been painted with all sorts of brushes 
One of them is that you don't rely on their words. One of them is that they are not trustworthy. One of them is that many of them are not principled. But I, I, I have met Dr. Ayucha, uh, Ayucha Ayu, and he looked to me like a principled person. I have, I have evidence uh, in my own experience to think that he's principled. And uh, he's a man, I think, that means well or, 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 or ordinarily. Uh, so I, I do not think even that we need to quote or remind him what he said, if he said that, uh, as reported on the media. If I am leading a party that is about to go to war, I understand the, the sentiments of the people of Nigeria, inclusiveness, making sure we have north-south balance, mid, uh, Muslim, we, uh, all kinds of demographic balance, uh, religious balance, ethnic balances, and all that. If I were the leader of the party, I didn't even need anybody to remind me to begin to say how we can change this mix. The South said they wanted the, uh, uh, the presidency, but it, it, the party decided against their constitution to allow it go to the North for expediency. And many people from in the party who believe in party supremacy are trying to live with that. Now you create a situation where the hierarchy of the party is from one section of the country, from board of trustee to chairman to presidential uh, uh, candidates and all that. We don't even need an external person to tell PDP that they need to do some rejigging so as to make the party look in, uh, uh, inclusive. We're all going to campaign if we're allowed to for the party. And when you go to your constituencies to campaign, you will need to say something. And they ask you questions. What are you going to answer? Sam, you are the one fighting for a South South, uh, a South Town president, a South East president particularly. We don't have it. We don't have chairman. We don't have uh, beauty ch uh, chairman. We have nothing. Sam, what are you telling me? In good conscience, what should I be saying? So I don't think uh, uh, you need to have made that uh, uh, So, So in, invariably, so in essence, in, in essence, uh, Dr. Habua, are you, is it fair to say to Senator Yocha, you should step aside now that Atiku Abubakar has emerged? If that's what he said, as I said, I see him as a man of honor, then he should follow the path of honor, if that's what he said. But I'm even going beyond that. Assume he didn't say it. If he's the leader of the party who has brought us to this point, he should make the sacrifices, do what needs to be done to make sure that Nigerians are happy with PDP, members of PDP are happy, they can bring their whole mind, their focus, and, and join the... So if he needs to step down for that to happen, he should do so. I mean, it's the best thing for us to be able to take the necessary action that will unite the party so that we can face the, 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 the enemy in quotes. Of course, there's no enemy here, but the opponents, uh, the, the opposing parties in the election. The, 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 the chairman of the party has a, 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 an onerous mission and responsibility to make sure the party does not break apart, that the party does not continue to um, erode or, or, or continue to... Uh, you know, be divided in these themes. Nobody can go to war, which we're about to go to, with this kind of division I'm seeing and unhappiness and complaints. All Many right. of the complaints are, are yeah. under the table. So I advise uh, Dr. Iyocha, you, whom I think is a man of honor, because I have met with him a couple of hours, also expressed that to him. He should take responsibility as the father of the party. He shouldn't be arguing with anybody. He shouldn't be going with the media and responding, I will reply. There are, there, are, there, are, there are diplomatic ways he can deal with things without stoking more fire. He should see himself as the father. Right. He's not competing with Dr. anybody. Yeah. And take those strategic decisions that will show that he's really a leader of the greatest party, the biggest party in Nigeria, even though it's the same in Africa, but at least for Nigeria, I can say so. All right. Dr. Sam Mohamed, our presidential aspirant in the People's Democratic Party in the 2023 presidential primary. Thank you so much indeed for your time tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you, Shane. God bless you. Thank you so much. Just before we go, let's tell you that the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has made some redeployment of some of its senior staff. It includes redeploying the rank. in Cross River State. Dr. Siri Omorugbe was now being reposted to Aquabum State, and the wreck in Edo State, Dr. Alaibo Johnson Sinkime, 
has been reported to Cross Riverstead. This is a part of uh, the ongoing restructuring and redeployment on postings in the commission, according to INEC. And 10 people are involved, including administrative secretaries and some senior members of the commission across the several states. But that's our show for tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Sean Kimale. Bye for now.